that these things are a process, and the reason I say it, look at the shape of the world. You're going to need to see more of God and to see Him in a greater way. So you have to be mindful to not only pray, but to believe in your prayers. The Holy Spirit's in this place. He's in my life. He's in my prayers. If you wait until the world's coming undone before you start believing that God answers my prayer, then what shape are you going to be in? The reason I say this, I got a sermon here. Maybe I'll, I don't know, maybe I'll read it today and then preach it on Sunday. I was briefed by the head of oncology, cancer ward, I'm chaplain in the hospital, and they tell me, now this is the head of oncology, out of all the uh, Delaware area, they said, a study was done that got them in big trouble with the FDA because it wasn't with the patient's consent. As people were admitted to oncology, and oncology is basically the cancer ward where you start dealing with people that have severe cancer, okay, treated cancer. They said as the patients came in, a list was made of all patients that were brought into the oncology department. Random, 50-50, they took no discrimination, they looked at nobody's faith affiliate, they looked at no gender, no ethnicity, nothing, just random. Half of them were subscribed to a prayer group without their knowing. The other half was not. And they said a list of names was just given to people that pray and said these people have cancer, please keep them in your prayers. And the patients didn't know, they didn't participate, were not aware at all. They said the results that came out of that, the people that were ascribed to the prayer group that recovered of their cancer and their treatment, how successful it was, was astronomical. And they did not even these were sinners, unbelievers, and their lifestyle was irrelevant. It was the fact that the people that were praying believed in their prayer. Now they're telling us this. That now they said they're actually going through some major lawsuits with the... or trouble litigation with the FDA because they didn't get consent of the person that they were they were participating and they just didn't know they were willing to participate that somebody was praying for them. and if those people had only known how much their prayers tap into God but people don't even believe nowadays God is in your prayers but if you wait until you need a miracle overnight. This is a process. And you might have somebody that works on divine healing, and that's all that his ministry is dedicated to. He himself will get results in what area? Divine healing. If somebody is dedicated to pastoring the lives of people, he doesn't necessarily major on divine healing or anything then he will get results because he believes in his ability to pastor people. So he will draw that out of God. He's labored for a long time with it. Just like a man that studied law. Just because he studied law doesn't mean he can run to the ocean, jump in, and he knows how to swim. He's never, he's never given the practice of swimming. Doesn't mean because he studied law he can drive a NASCAR and be successful at it. Doesn't mean that he knows how to do law enforcement. But a man that's given his whole life to law enforcement or to be a detective, he actually is probably pretty good at it. He looks for every nuance of the person's body language that he's interviewing. Immediately 
when they shifted the conversation, why did they shift the conversation? What was the thing prior before the shift? Then he sits out in his detective car because he's a detective. He's not a, law, a traffic enforcement, he's a detective. So he sits there and goes over his notes, just like a doctor that sits in the hallway or behind the desk and starts charting over his conversation. He would start thinking, when we talked about when was the last time that you saw him alive, what was the next statement, did we change the conversation, so that mess made the person nervous, they intentionally changed the conversation, so they were leading, not being led in the interview. But throughout the rest of the interview, they were being led. Well, how many people think they're that? It's because we studied his job as a detective. He's made sure he's been mindful of those things. But it doesn't mean just because he's a good detective that he would be good in the courtroom. How many presidents have we had or leaders that were great generals and horrible presidents because they were horrible statesmen you assume that you'd be a good statesman because you were a good general but that was a broad assumption you had never studied being a statesman at all but a wonderful general you see so we as Christians must be mindful that there's parts of God in our lives. If we leave undone, they will be left undone. So what kind of church or Christian or individual do you want to be? A full gospel church. A full gospel Christian. You see? And being mindful when I pray. Mindful of my prayer. Mindful that... I'm presenting myself to God. I'm approaching His altar. So I, I have a good what? I can have a good, respectful opening. Then I have a body in my prayer, and then a closing. It's that simple. An opening is, you say, is it a generic opening? It doesn't pertain to the what? To the sacrifice. But it's something to the point, Heavenly Father, an opening. I just open my prayer with God. Heavenly Father, I want to say it's personally a privilege to approach your throne of grace. It could be that simple. Or Heavenly Father, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you and love you and love my experience with you. I just open. Now I'm going to address the need, the situation, the person, or the uh, situation that needs to be brought before the Lord. It might be Brother Peter. I'm going to pray for Brother Peter. You see, it might be finance, it might be healing. I'm going to be praying for myself. I'm going to address the situation. Heavenly Father, I want to tell you it's a privilege to be in your presence. And we thank that, it's so thankful that we can approach your throne of grace. Heavenly Father, Brother Peter stands before me, and we have agreed to pray upon this particular situation. For you have said in your word, see? I'm laying faith on the word. We have said in your word, where two or three agree of touching one thing, I, the Lord God, will hear from heaven. He has this financial need. Now we're going to believe. He has this physical need. We're going to believe. Because this may be something small, but he might need something big down the road. And if we are approaching this, with, uh, we're not even going to practice our faith. I can tell you down the road when we need the big things, they're not going to happen. They're not going to come to pass. So I'm mindful to believe on this little thing right here. So Heavenly Father, I'm asking you to bless Brother Peter in this situation and let this particular situation, Lord, trouble at work, this particular trouble, we're asking you to let this work out for him. Now we're going to close it. We ask all these things, Lord, in your name. For you said, do all that you do in word or deed, Lord. Do it in your name. So in the name of Jesus Christ, we ask. Close it. Now we're going to believe. Not necessarily a beginning. We're not going to major on or the closing that we're going to major on. We're going to major on what we laid on the altar. 
See? And we're going to be mindful of that. And we're asking God for these particular things. The Bible says... Leviticus 9. And Moses and Aaron went into the tabernacle of the congregation and came out and blessed the people and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the people. And there came fire out from before the Lord and consumed upon the altar the burnt offering and the fat which when he, all the people saw they shouted and fell on their faces. This was something that Israel learned right away that God was to consume their sacrifice. Let the Lord that be the Lord answer by fire. For he said, the fire shall never ever be burning upon the altar. It shall never go out. You expected a living God to be in your midst. You see? This is why so many moods, religions, good runs. This is why they die. Because they stop looking upon a living God for the answers. They start looking back. Now, listen to how strange this is. And we may have been caught up into this. If there's a need that arises, instead of looking at a living God, Father, you're here. Show us your word, Father. Now imagine Jesus Christ being there. Instead of seeking the Holy Spirit for the answer, according to the Word, we actually look back and see how, well, how's John Wesley do? And there he stands. What would, what, how would Martin Luther handle that? And there he stands. And if the Holy Spirit started to move and give unction and wanted to answer, well, no, it's, it's, completely foreign to us completely ignore him he's not wanted in this conversation because we're used to looking back not ahead and he is a living God and a risen Savior and the God that be God shall answer by fire he answers your prayers that's the difference but so many people had gotten used to laying the sacrifice upon the altar and never even ever even looking back to see if God consumed the sacrifice. Remember the days in Eli? The days of Eli? The, the fire went out upon the altar and God rose up a little 12 year old boy, Samuel and said, Samuel and Samuel ran and said, Eli, did you call me? Eli said, I didn't call you. Go to sleep. And then the voice came again, Samuel, because God had never died. He was just dead to Eli and Hophni and Phinehas, his sons. And Samuel ran and said, yes, Eli, did you call me? I didn't call you, boy, go to bed. And he called the third time. And he says, thou surely did call me, Eli. And Eli perceived it was the Lord calling him. Now stop and think about that. God called David the same way. Israel completely forgot completely ignored that they had served a living God. And Eli went, oh my goodness. Samuel, if you hear it again, stand and say, yes, Lord, it is I. And the Lord called him again and spoke to Samuel, just a little bitty, and the Bible says, but Samuel knew not the Lord at this time. But after this, the Bible says, and from this day forward, Samuel knew the Lord. And it went throughout the land. 
that there was a prophet in the land named Samuel, at a boy whom God speaks of. And in the morning, Eli said, Samuel, did the Lord speak to you? He said, yes, he did, Eli. Tell me what he says. He said, I'd rather not tell you, Eli. Eli said, tell me now, son. He said, I'd rather not tell you. Son, tell me now, or my prayer will be that God bring upon you all that he spoke. And he said, the Lord said he's not happy with you, Eli. He's not happy with Phineas and Hophni. For they, they run, they profane the name of the Lord and they carouse with the women that come to the temple. They drink liquor openly and they steal the money from the tabernacle. And Eli, it's not like Eli didn't try to be a decent person. But he completely disregarded the fact that there was a living God that he ever had to answer to. And his thought was, you know young people nowadays, they will do what they will do. Instead of a living God, King did as Daniel. If Eli had remembered that God was a living God, he can get his dander up. He would have corrected Hophni and Symphenius right off. And he said, he said that he will destroy Hophni and Symphenius and he'll rip the priesthood from your hands and all that he had done to you and the horrible thing. And what did Eli say? Oh, you're a nut boy. No. Eli said, that sounds like God. Sounds like something God would do. You see? Sounds like a living God. He would bring judgment across the land of America. He would open up with a song about the consuming fire and the glory of the Lord to fill this place right before we walk out. He would do that. That's the God we serve. But if we fail not to take it into remembrance, it would be so wiped away to where we become complete doubters. Oh, I don't know about that. God's still alive just the same. You see? And he's still leading in the church. You can become such an unbeliever that you don't even believe that God is in his church anymore. Well, the Bible says God has said into the church, apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists for the perfecting of the saints for the edifying of the venture. You have to remind yourself of that. Do you know that? The Apostle Peter said, I know you know these things, but I put you in remembrance of these. The Apostle Paul said, stirring up those gifts that are within inside of you. You can let the light of God die out. But you have to be mindful that the God is a living God. This was the difference between him and all other gods. He actually answered, for our God is a consuming fire. And he answers by fire. David, in the time of his distress, the Bible says, and David built an altar there unto the Lord and the offering, and offered a burnt offering and a peace offering. Now David knew what he was doing. He didn't go like Saul. A complete unbeliever until what? God made himself real to Saul because Saul should have made sure that he allowed God or kept God in his remembrance. But when it came to God, bypassed Saul's willing participant part and God made himself real, then what did it do? It negated his ability to believe. The Bible says it is appointed once for man to die, then the judgment. Whether you believe or disbelieve, God will show you he's alive. But you had an opportunity to keep the fire of God on the altar. The Bible says David built an altar to the Lord. How many of you have an altar, spiritually speaking, in your life that you offer upon the altar of God your sacrifices? My willingness to believe. I'm looking for a prayer to lay upon the altar. 
And I want to anoint it and that prayer be consumed by a living God. You see? David not only offered a sacrifice offering, but a peace offering. What is it? A peace offering between me and you, God. I'm, I'm in this church. I'm worshiping, Lord. I'm believing the Holy Spirit is in this place. See? A fellowship offering. And I'm waiting. Why? I feel nothing. Nothing is coming. But I'm expecting the Holy Spirit to consume this offering with fire. You see? You've got to be mindful to keep the altar and the light burning in your life. And I'm expecting God. You might be so poor spiritually that all you can offer to God is a little turtle dove. But you know what? You might be so spiritually anemic that you can't even offer a turtle dove. It has to be a hint sweet of flower. That's how poor you are. But I'm expecting God to bless this little hint of flower to one of these days. I will be spiritually blessed that I can offer turtle doves upon the altar. And then I can watch the priest, our high priest, in my presence while I stand there, rip the head off the altar and sprinkle the blood upon the other one and throw it in the air and watch the blood drip. And I think I had the ability. One of these days I was a stranger in the land and I had no ability to offer that. But watch God. He's consuming my fire or my offering. He has so raised me up that I'm watching a living God answer by fire and consuming my prayer. You see? And after a while, you see God because I'm believing. I'm not like Cain. Cain got content with offering on the altar and whether it got answered or it didn't answer. Who cares? This is the way Israel had gotten. And that's why he said, your offering has become a stench in my nose. You don't even believe anymore. You don't even lay on the horns of the altar. The question is, why do you pray if you don't lay there until God answers? And you may have tied into something that you're not capable to bring in the past. But you have to be mindful of that. And say, Lord, maybe I don't have the faith for this. But if you could show me in a little way that I'm on the right track. If you could give me a witness, a flicker, a flame, something to let me know that you're here. And I will be mindful to believe and hold on to that little until I'm able to walk up with my big old bull oxen and take that big old two-ton animal and whoosh on the altar and say, all this I've done at thy command, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the God that be God answer by fire over me. Just consume the whole thing right before you in the presence of your enemies. See, you have to know where you're at, spiritually speaking. The Bible says, if you cannot contend with the footman thereof, how shall you contend with the horseman thereof? You've taken no self-examination where you're at spiritually. And just let the fire go out. You never even looked back to see if he ever answered your prayer. You pray like the heathens pray. The Apostle Paul said, we know those things offered to idols are nothing. Because they don't have a God that they're sacrificing to. It's for a religion that is meaningless and dead. But to tell me that the children of Israel, who was given the commandments by the hands of Moses by a living God, who is a consuming fire, has gotten to that place that they walk away without even looking back to see if he's answered. 
this is what made them the shout of the kings in the camp. It wasn't the fact that they had hard times or didn't have hard times, but they had a living God there. And if you've gotten to a point that you don't even believe that things will work out for you, you don't even believe that you're in the will of God. What? This Wednesday night, prayer meetings are being given. How many people in the religious world will you condemn by being here? What? Because you came before a living God, honoring the commandments of the Lord. Knowing exactly what you're doing. Knowing exactly who I'm approaching. Noah being moved by fear by himself. Are you alone? But Noah being moved by fear, one man prepared an ark by which he condemned the world. Because he approached the living God and was ever mindful that my God is alive. And he answers my fire. They expected this. And it became so common that they didn't even realize that the presence of God was with them continuously. If God doesn't answer and fill you with the Holy Ghost, he hasn't accepted your repentance. If God doesn't consume the nature of sin out of you, when you ask God to deal with this old sinful, lustful nature, if He doesn't consume it by fire, He hasn't answered yet. Stay there and know He'll answer. And if He doesn't answer, then you lay there. God, you're a living God. We serve not the creeds and idols, but we serve a God that is alive. Jesus Christ the same, yesterday, today, and forever. That kind of God. You're the same God in all generations. And if you're only offering a little hint of wheat upon the altar, know what you're offering. You little sisters, know what you're offering. You young men, know what you're offering. If you say, I'm going out to work today, why don't you give God a little bit of glory before you pull out of that driveway, bow your head, and say, Father, watch over me. Give me a good day. And now be looking by the time you pull back in. He answered that prayer. But if you won't even bother to pray, what's wrong? See? What's wrong? Be thankful. You look at all the other people offering their turtle doves and their lamb and their goats. Some of them are laying two ton bullocks on the altar. Some are spreading out seven he rams. There you got a little hint of flour. Praise God for your hint of flour. Because you've all come to the exact same altar. And all of you are expecting the exact same thing. The God that be God. Answer my fire. Show himself alive amongst you. Don't accept defeat. Remember this is a process. It doesn't happen overnight. You better get the wheels a-turning. Some of these things take years. And if you wait 10 years, you're 10 years behind. There's no helicopter drop to drop you back into the race. You just lost 10 years. Get up and get a-moving. This world, or the hounds of hell, are on the tail of this world. Don't be caught with it. Bible says, and now when Solomon had made an end of praying, there never was a time that God didn't answer by fire, friends. That was the way he answered. 
And when Solomon, all the people were standing there, they knew what they had done. The heathens of the land had bowed to a living God, knowing that God is amongst those people. And they sent peace offerings in the, 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 the cedars of Lebanon. Who were they? The fellow Phoenicians, or Greeks that had been put on the run, who landed in the top part of Egypt and Lebanon. They're heathens, mind you, giving more reverence to the God that's in their midst than most Christians do today. And that was underneath the covenant of law where there was no grace. It was given in the hands of Moses, but our covenant was given in the hands of Jesus Christ. You see? And they stood there. They had all made their offerings. I mean, they, they had brought in wagon loads of bullocks and Wagon loads of Hirams. When you read in the in the shekel in the of gold and of silver and of precious stones, that's what the Queen of Sheba was doing. Bringing all of it. She was a heathen. But she had loaded it down with offerings. And when they got there, they were coming under our expectation. I mean, they had come from the lands of far. This was Christ couldn't get over. And he said, and the queen of Sheba shall rise and condemn this generation because she came from afar under expectation. And there they're all standing. I mean, these people had made a six-month journey just so they could offer a prayer to a living God. And after all of the ritual and the sacrifice and everything that was done, they were just peering under expectation, knowing it's going to happen. How many of you know that God's going to answer your prayer? Knowing you pray for your kids, knowing God's going to bless them. This is not an if, ands, or buts. He is under moral obligation to bless them. For he said in his word, serve me. And I'll bless you and your offspring with you. See? Fear has consumed your heart. You shouldn't be looking at the altar with a wincing eye. You should look at yourself and think, what kind of shape have I gotten into? I used to offer bull oxen on the altars. And I can't even muster up enough faith to offer a head of flour. I've got to walk this thing back. This with Hosnes and Phineas done. Eli. If Eli had got to God before God got to Eli, he may not have died the way he died. But Eli had known God. And what did he say? Yes, tell me your brother. That sounds like God. That's just what he would do. That's just what he would do. Ravish the whole thing, me and all. He's ripping the priesthood from my hands. I'll die the, the death. He's going to kill Hyasnes and Phineas, And every one of them, yeah, it sounds like God, Samuel. And he pitched over backwards and broke his neck. But he didn't doubt whether or not God would answer. He had just forgotten that God would answer. And there they all stand under expectation in closing. And the Bible says, and when David had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrificer, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And what did I say? Let's take note of this psalm that Brother Paul brought us out on. The glory of the Lord is in this place. See? It wasn't a question whether or not God is in this sermon. We come underneath expectation to give a sermon. It's his people he's saving. So it's no small thing or unusual thing that he's working on the other end in the worship service. So then I don't even need to ask you. I know he's working on that end too. See? It's God in the midst of his people. We come underneath expectation. But we're not like the heathens. 
The Bible says when Elijah said, we're going to put an end to this. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, choose ye one bullock for yourselves and dress it first, for ye are many, and I am but one. And call on the name of your gods, but put no fire underneath it. And they took the bullock and bullocks, which was given them, and they dressed it and called on the name of Baal. But they they never expected Baal to answer. They just didn't like the fact that they were being put on the fire or being put to the test. But they thought, let's make a good show out of this thing. At least if we can heat it up a bit, there's more of us than there is of him, and we can put on a better show. And called on the name of Baal from morning unto noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was nor any that answered. They were religious. You run this show. They never put on a good show, but they don't expect anything to answer. Have we fellowship with heathens at times? And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass that noon Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud. pity them that their nervousness and they didn't believe he mocked them cry aloud for he is a god either he is talking or he is pursuing or he is in a journey or pre-adventure he's sleeping and must be awoken how many people feel like their god just fell asleep and they're worried whether or not their children will turn out right whether or not the situation at the job will turn out right whether or not their end when you mount the whole thing up, husband, wife, family, just all their desires will work out right. Maybe your God needs to be woke up. Maybe he's so old and dozy with man, he's fallen asleep in his apple. Maybe he's broke a hip and can't get to you yet. And they cried aloud. And cut themselves after this manner with knives and lances till the blood gushed out of them. Trying to get God to answer. Do you realize that's many people? They, they've never once believed. Never even asked God to heal a headache. And all of a sudden, they're in dire straits and asking God to heal cancer. I mean, that's a long haul, friends. That's a 10, 20, 30 year process. And you want it done overnight. God doesn't helicopter drop you. You should have been attentive. You see? Because when your hour of calamity comes upon you, you find him not. You see? But to them that are faithful, at his return, will he usher in his own. And pre adventure, I know all of you are faithful. Why? Because you're here on the night like this with the weather what it is. But I'm trying to stir you to be mindful. Walk through our lives. You see, we have to do this. We encourage ourselves. We start realizing, hey, God didn't answer. Something may be wrong. Maybe it's not His will. Maybe it's in the wrong direction. But one thing's for sure. Maybe it's me. But one thing's for sure. I'm not going to let it go until the answer. I'll just keep laying on it. Something wrong, God? Is it me? Have I displeased you? You haven't consumed my sacrifice. It's getting near lunchtime. Maybe I ought to need to skip this lunch and stay right here at my altar. You see? Maybe I haven't been on my knees enough, Lord. And the Bible says, what did they say? Always, when God didn't answer, he Maybe you just want to see what you do. And the Bible says, and then they went to prayer and supplication. A little more earnest. They didn't want to go and let it go. If you call your kids and they don't answer, what kind of mother goes, yeah. Does she, after the third time, and the kids should have answered? Does she lay down the soup bowl and go see what's wrong? 
Why? Because she believed the child could be alive. Well, the little girl with an imaginary friend can forget it. And you can do the same thing with an imaginary God that doesn't answer. You know why? But you ought to say, hold on. God didn't answer my prayer. And I laid it upon the altar and expected God to answer. Like the little mother that drops the seed and goes looking for her. But God, she knew. Where is he at? Maybe he was just seeing if you actually expected him to answer. How many him just not even thinking twice and figure, I'll just wait. How many times if you've ever done that, somebody call you Brother Paul? And you kind of just wait. And then after all, you hear, ah, who cares? Our relationship just changed. You thought that I loved you, cared about you. But there we were in the woods, and I said, ah, who cares? Got in my truck and drove away. Would mine and your relationship ever be the same? Of course it would. That's what happened with Eli. See, we bring our offering and we expect God to answer by fire. I'm finished reading this and then I'll go. I just don't know. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near. See, he's coming under expectation. Expecting to see a display. And the people came near him and he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. See, we all, we can allow, we're human, we can allow our little altars to get a little bit weather-beaten. It's normal. But when you notice it, God expects you to repair it. Maybe you didn't notice it. Busy lives, and we didn't even notice that a brick fell off the house. But when you notice it, and you go, ah, whatever. A little bit of idleness of the hands and the folding of the hands and the turning on the bed and the house falls down. And Elijah repaired the altar that, of the Lord that had been broken down. And Elijah took the twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of Israel and laid out all the stones upon the altar. And he put the wood in the, in the order and cut the bullock, every bit of it, knowing exactly what he was doing. Look, if there's a scriptural answer, you expect a living God to answer that. We don't push him aside, and what does our creed say? Absolutely not. He's in this faith. He's got a faith bigger than this. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock into pieces. And remember that covenant with Abraham? Elijah was still believing in it. How many people remind God of Calvary? What a covenant. He went through an awful lot of pains to make that covenant between me and thee. And thy people. And you said it was finished. I believe that. And the pieces, and he laid the wood and filled full barrels full with water and poured it on the bar- on the burnt sacrifice and on all the wood. Look at Elijah. He's expecting God to answer all of this to work out. How many people just let it just heap it up, buddy? Let it keep going bad. Let them tell me that I'm fired. You think that that's going to work out for my bad? Why don't you heap a little bit more on once you call the cops? See? Heap a little bit more on. I'm telling you, all things work to the good that are called according to his purpose. And the footsteps of the righteous are ordained of the Lord. The Lord is in this thing. I believe it. This will work out for my good. Period, bar none. And he said, do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran round about the altar and filled the trenches with water. And it came to pass at that time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said unto the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital C. Put him right in his perspective place. Eleanor, the almighty, self-existing one God of God. Lord God of Abraham, 
Gee, what an opening. What an opening. Put God right in his place. Reminded him of the covenant. Not me, Lord. I just doubted not long ago. Pulled in the key. They should have killed me. I'm done with this whole thing. Or was about to. How many times had he done it? Not you, Lord. You, your covenant. And you'll be making this covenant long after I'm gone with the next generation that I've never even known. Lord God of Abraham and Isaac and of Jacob, let it be known this day that thou art God in Israel. See, all Israel forgot and let the fire go out, but not Elijah. How many of the Christian world let the fire go out? What about you? Are you going to be a part of them? Well, put him in his respective place. Thou art the God in Israel and that I am thy servant. How many are God's servants? I'm going to say this, and I'm closing. Honest to goodness, I prayed this morning. You say, God, I know you don't need me, but you do need somebody here on earth. You need human flesh, and your flesh is laying on the altar, so it can't come. So you need instrumentalities down here on earth. Lord, I want to be one. I want to be something that you can move through. Something that you can reflect in the darkness. Lord, I want to be that in my capacity. I want to be something. I want to be a beacon that the living God shines through. Let your weather beat this and let it take all of the destruction that the world can give. But let the light of God so shine through me. At least while I'm here. Let me wear out and not knock out. Let me be a beacon in the darkness, standing, holding the truth of God's word. And that's all of us. Every one of us ought to want to be that. In our capacity, we're all different, but every one of us is just as important. Each one of us can let the light of God shine through us. The question is, it's up to us. Do we refract or do we reflect? I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Living God in his prayer closet, expecting God to answer, expecting him to speak. Lord, is there something wrong? If there's not, I'm going to stand with faith and just believe that the God of gods is with me. I'm not going to be filled this cavity full of doubt, worry. Let the doubts and the worries take their flight. Because the Holy Spirit is in this place. And you've already given me your spirit and consumed my repentance with fire. You've given me the Holy Ghost. Now shine through me, Lord. And let doubts and worries and all the darkness that's in me take its flight. And let the light of God consume me. Hear me, oh, oh. Capital O, capital L-O-R-D. Hear me, O Lord. See how it strikes? Hear me, O Lord. Hear me. That this people may know that thou art Lord. Again, God. And that thou has turned their backs again. That of know that real religion still exists. That's what Samuel did to Eli. A little nine-year-old boy let that 60-year-old man know that true heartfelt religion still exists. And it was there, let's go. God, the Holy Spirit filled all over that little boy. And God spoke right out of him to me. That, that would be God. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice the wood and the stones and the dust. I'm just going to say, a God that answers like that kind of sacrifice, this wasn't a, an overnight prayer. I mean, a God that consumed that much, this wasn't just a hint of flour. This wasn't a turtle dove. He consumed everything. 
the sacrifice, the wood, the everything that was on the altar. He consumed the water, licked it up out there, and consumed the dust. I mean, that's a lot of work on Elijah's part, hammering out that relationship between him and God. That's a long process. How many people run out there and want to be God's Elijah and the first storm that comes, the first time God doesn't answer, they walk away wind eaten. The stones, the dust, and licked up all the water and the wishes come that was in the trench. What a God. What a God. And we want that Lord to be in our lives. The world has forgotten that that type of God exists, but we haven't forgotten. We know that that God exists. We expect that God to answer and consume our prayers. Consume sin if it's in our lives. Sin is unbelief. Consume any kind of immorality. Lord, you know I don't want that. Consume it, Lord. Right out of my life and expect God to answer by fire. Lord, I say and do things I shouldn't. I don't want that. I know you're watching. I know you don't want that. Take it out of my life, Lord. And expect him to just consume it. Expect results. Lord, I want to be happy. I want the joy of the Lord. And expect that God to just answer. Amen. I want to feel the victory. I want to know what it's like to taste the victory again on all circumstances. I want to know what it's like to believe again. I want to live again. How many could say that, Lord, I want to live again? Amen. Amen. I could say it. Hallelujah, Lord, I want to live. Amen. Let's stand together. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love. Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. How many believe? something in my life, why don't you come? Oh, and I've Amen. tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. Yes, Lord. my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Amen. Your presence, Lord. Oh, are welcome here. Come flood this place, fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your Flood this place. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father. Never let Thank you, Lord. Go. Yes, Lord. I lay it all down. Yes, I do. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, to hear yes, you say Lord. that I'm a friend. You're in this place, Father. You're in our hearts, Lord. You are my desire. Just Father. Up and down the aisles, Lord. Oh, and no one there else more will offerings that need to be offered. Do. Yes, Lord, thank you, Father. Because nothing else can take your place. Amen. Oh, to feel the warmth of your embrace. Yes, Father. One after another, Lord. Help me find the way. Just march up and down. Oh, the and aisles, bring Father. me back to you. Amen. Yes, Lord. You're all I want. Amen, Father. You're all.
Be men 
the flow to grace, that we might know the living no Savior. Turning back. In the name no of Jesus Christ. Back. Hallelujah. You can take this whole world. Just give me Jesus. Oh, take this whole world. Just give me sacrifices and after they offer sacrifice for the people then the priests turn and offer the sacrifice for themselves when they walked into the holiest of holies amen and the congregation knew that God was in this place when he went down over the mercy seat he was leaving as a congregation let's go before the Lord and let's offer a sacrifice the praise of our lips in the belief of our heart that we are not only going to be, but we are, and from this moment forward, a holy people consecrated unto the Lord. We are the living example of a living hope. We are the embodied meshes, our sins forgiven. We'll walk forward with a heart full of faith, with our sacrifice on the altar, renewing our youth, amen. Heavenly Father, now we as the congregation, Father, as the priest, Father, I first offer a sacrifice for myself, Lord, of a reconsecration and a rededication, Father. My sins being forgiven, Lord, my heart being renewed, an honor and a joy to come to the altar of the living God to offer my sacrifice. I do this in the name of Jesus Christ. Now I make it a sacrifice for the people, Father, as the congregation and the whole. Lord, the world is becoming dark as we step through the fog into the new tomorrows. We raise an everlasting sign coming into the new land that we are the people of God. From this day forward, we'll never doubt again, letting those things that are in the past be in the past. We come across the waters of separation, being bound and determined to love our enemies, do good unto them that mistreat us, believing all things, hoping all things, enduring all things. We shall be the people of the Most High, looking for His return. We do this in the name of Jesus Christ, which is above all names, that at his return, he shall find us faithfully working and faithfully doing at his return. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray this prayer upon the covenant that was made at the day of Calvary, Father. When you stood up before your people and said, a new covenant I give unto you. This covenant is the new covenant in my blood. And when you stood on Calvary, you stretched out your arms and you said to us, it is finished. Upon that sacrifice, Father, that's laid upon the altar, we offer up this prayer. We ask that you receive it, Father, as a sweet sense. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back.
Don't you love the Lord? Amen. You know, sometimes I've seen the women do it. They get in their house and they do the scrubbing and cleaning wagon. But sometimes they just want to get in there and do that deep cleaning. You know, get this thing like new. Amen. It needs to be just shining everywhere. Amen. Sometimes that's what we need. Isn't that right? Amen. Each one of us, every single one of us, need to rededicate our lives. Amen. A fresh and anew. Amen. It's sometime in that period. Hallelujah. It's good. It's good. Amen. To stand that way before the Lord, isn't it? Amen. Don't you love him? Hallelujah. Don't you appreciate good preaching? Amen. We love the Lord so much. Amen. You take the name of Jesus with you, okay? Amen. God bless you all. In Jesus' name. I have decided.